How do you keep the water drinkable? We're going to have to pump all this out and we're going to make a new one of these because this is dead dangerous. Yeah. And I was telling you the other day, wasn't I, that we'll make a new one and have the sunken, um, sunken hand grips. So the, the roof will, this side of the roof will feed here, the back half will also feed here. That back corner over the toilet will feed a, a 10,000 litre rainwater tank that we have yet to buy one of these years we get some money. And um, well, it's all 12 volt, the solar panels are going up on the roof over that side there. There's 12 volt um, water pumps will be over here. So we've got gas fridge, we've got gas stove, um, all LED uh, light fittings, fluoros. I've even got some car driving lights for bright areas and mm. what have you. So four solar panels, 80 watts each. So that's um, 240 watts. So that should be enough. If not, we'll get a, um, a windmill like Ian McDonnell has. It's a $500 job from New Zealand, um, assembled in New Zealand, made in China. It goes three part, three phase into, then he's got an inverter, I guess, back down to single phase. Um, so uh, that's what we are, we're, we're going to, to be doing in the future. Yeah, beautiful. So spacious. How, how did you decide on the orientation? So well, like an east-west? It's facing east-west and most of the winds we get are from the, the eastern quadrangle. Um, so We'll catch all the easterlies and the westerlies are over here, so um, it should it should be okay. And any cyclones, the majority of them come from the east, which is going to be a problem. But I think we're still leaving trees and what have you down there. That's going to break the wind. Any strong winds that come from the east here, um, we have had to do a great deal of clearing. The bush over there is just like what it was here. We cut down and cleared uh, several um, kabahi trees that are yay round and x meters high and what have you. And, uh, Can you use them for furniture? We are going to take the logs and send them to Mike, the, the miller, and get it all milled and uh, use it for furniture and uh, so on. How much is living today? Yeah. Not, not this mic, it's uh, another mic. Um, the one who was building out at uh, Fanui on the <laughs> So, um, yeah, but I'm just a little concerned that the, the timber's been lying here for quite some time and yeah. uh, it might start to rot and become unusable. But the thing is, it's going to cost several hundred bucks just to get it to the mill. Yeah. You know, you've got to get the front end loader or get. For most of them, we can pick it up with a team of um, rugby players or something like that. But yeah. there's one or two on the biggest one, the best one, I think it would be a bit beyond... Because um, you can make some amazing benches, couldn't you? I mean, right. you've got so much space there. You can have benches going wall to wall or, or out for outside. Uh, we've got an island yeah, planned in the centre here. Oh. A little stone island that uh, Mania has been um, making Dreaming sure I don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where did you get the inspiration from? Um, so there's some of their books and everything, how they uh, put a decoration inside their house and I like it. Uh, like a real island. <laughs> <laughs> you can plant a little palm tree in the middle. <laughs> of yeah. course, yes, why not? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a fantastic idea. Is, when we first arrived here today, we both commented on how cool slash cold it was inside the house. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It certainly Wood, uh, sorry, stone is supposed to be a bad uh, insulator, but um, this this lot uh, certainly keeps it uh, cold. It's, it's well, 600 at the base. That's that's a hell of a lot of stone to get through. Mm. Yeah. The roof, the uh, the, uh, the the roof and the rafters and so on. But um, again, this will all be done over a space of uh, many months slash years, I think, as as time and money permits. But uh, we're going to move into this place as soon as we can make it lockable, and we'll have the uh, we'll put the, the rainwater system in. We'll have 
rainwater here, it'll be drinkable or portable or, or we don't know yet. But um, what else also we're going to do is we're actually going to wash this down because you see it's really dusty. And then we're going to coat everything here with a, um, a clear lock, um, block, lock, concrete uh, sealant type thing. It's clear, it's almost like a varnish but it gets sucked in and so that'll stop this uh, the shedding of, of dust here, but um, we will wash it down, scrub it, dry it, paint it inside and outside because um, outside, uh, as soon as it rains, the mud will be splashed onto it and it's going to go black, so we don't want to have to keep washing it. Um, it's already started to go black and green, it goes black or green very, very quickly. So um, that's another plan. Also, Surrounding the house will be a, a, a walkway or a path with gardens on the outside and so on. The land slopes down like this and unfortunately the, the kitchen is on the high side of the house, not on the low side, so it will mean that there's going to be a great deal of digging of uh, sump pits for the kitchen. I'm not sure whether I'm going to run it down all down into one sump pit down here, the hand basin and the sink over there, I'm not sure yet. Um, Probably not. I think I'll dig two, two pits, um, one out directly out in front of the kitchen uh, area and uh, another one just out the side here. It doesn't have to be very deep as long as we've got um, bushes and stuff growing nearby. It'll suck it up and uh, we'll keep it uh, clean. We haven't uh, taken the supports down from this end yet until we uh, frame it and then when we take the framing off we will um, knock these uh, temporary supports down. The, um, it was taken down here, you can see what happened. <laughs> you see this beam on the, the post here, see in the corner? Yeah. How it's uh, oh, how it's fallen? Yeah. Doug has said that it's, it's okay, it's just uh, cosmetic now, the roof's settled, but uh, I'll have to ask him yet again. Um, if it had been framed and nailed in with plywood or whatever, then that would not have happened. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right, John, see you later. Sure. Yes, you're more than welcome to come around anytime. That thirty dollars. We'll just put that in there, and there's just a big picture window looking out on the bush there. There is going to be a carver plantation next door over here. Um, the other novelty about this place is that the tour of the shower is going to be outside. Ah. We're actually putting an outside shower surrounded by um, ba uh, not bamboo, bananas and uh, what have you, and we'll have a um, an awning over the top, and there'll be a soak down here somewhere yeah uh, again of bananas because they're very good at uh, soaking up um, soapy water and um, we still haven't quite worked out whether we'll have a, a color font or whether we'll make a um, solar array and try and heat the water because at this time of year it's not very pleasant showering in cold water <coughs> but um, the roof itself was um, is color bond, color bond steel. Um, it's also been screwed down with uh, these U butte um, screws. And I think I was telling you, a dollar twenty-five a screw. So there's about three thousand paangas worth of uh, screws up on the roof there. Um, Doug, when he did it, decided that. Well, I also agreed that um, we're going to do it properly. So you can see that all the rafters are. 600 centers or 600 and something centers this is the way it's supposed to be built so there's an awful, awful lot of uh, timber up there there's about six or seven tons of timber down with this um, so it's all been nailed and uh, it's also been um, strapped on the edges here so hopefully it's going to be uh, cyclone proof and uh, it'll be here in another 20 years and won't get damaged or blown away or anything like this. <laughs>